The governor of Ondo State, uh, Rotting Makirudulu, is dead. Mr. Kirudulu died at about 2 a.m. on Wednesday at a German hospital where he was receiving treatment. This is according to a senior government official in Ondo State, though there are reports of uh, another allocation for his death. But he died of leukemia and prostate cancer, two ailments uh, that had made him incapacitated for several months. Lucky Ayadatiwa, the Eswa acting governor of Ondo State, who is a deputy governor of Ondo State, has been sworn in today as the substantive governor of the state in an event held at the governor's office in Akure, the Ondo State capital. The chief judge of the state, Justice Olushego Dusola, administered the oath of office on him. Uh, governor Kredulu's death follows months of speculation regarding his health and the political battle in his inner circle between himself and his deputy governor, uh, Lucky Aedatiwa, or should I say between his inner circle and the erstwhile deputy governor of Ondo State. And we right here on Politics HQ say, may his soul rest in peace. Um, Ondo State has lost a gem of a governor. He will be remembered for his contributions to the people of Ondo State and, of course, southwest Nigeria. And indeed, we want to find out tonight uh, what lies ahead for the people of the Sunshine State, a uh, beautiful state with beautiful people, and what lies ahead as far as the governance of that state is concerned with Ayadatiwa uh, coming on board. Um, sometime last, uh, this month rather, uh, some indigents of Ondo State and civil society organizations from across Nigeria converged on Ondo State uh, for um, a protest called um, uh, Akerdulu Must Resign protest. Uh, this was led by Nigerian politician and human rights activist Omoele Shore. Um, who also comes from Ondo State tonight. He joins us on the program, and I'm glad to say good evening to you, Omoy Lishore. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for bringing me. All right. Uh, give us your, your reaction to the passing of your governor, um, Rotimi Akredilu SAN. Well, as a human being, I send my condolences to the family, and uh, there's nothing too shocking about it because uh, we knew that uh, this was going to happen. It's just, it was just a matter of time. And it's sad that uh, his family and some politicians did this to him. Uh, there was no basis for bringing him from Germany to Nigeria, only for politics. And that must uh, have hastened his demise. But regardless, uh, cancer is not something you wish on anybody, especially when it reaches terminal stages uh, it was just a matter of time. As a matter of fact, uh, from what I heard and I knew, uh, which I told you the last time we spoke here, he was given up to May uh, 2023, but he survived a bit longer. Probably would have you know, stayed longer if his wife had not forced him to come back to try and uh, use him to use his presence to impeach his deputy, who today is the governor of uh, the state. So we did our part, and uh, it's up to the new substantive governor to do his part. You know, uh, if you ask me, do I have any special hope that something would happen differently? I don't think so. This is uh, a period of political transition. So what you see more of is the new substantive governor trying to become a governor and his opponents doing everything to sabotage him. So there'll be a lot of distractions. Uh, 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 Omar how how will you um, remember Rotimi Akirudu? Honestly, I, I, I told you last time, and I'll say it again, I never paid too much attention to this state, even though it was my state, um, for the big picture. So I was focused on how to liberate our country, Nigeria. But so what I remember of him is this last part. And I think whatever his legacies might have been, uh, which I don't see much on the ground, this is what came to define him, the guy who was dying but, uh, you know, clung to power. Are you, not be, are you not being too eventually. hard? Are you not being too hard um, on him? I mean, before he left. I thought you were asking. I thought I thought you were asking for my opinion, not you know, uh, you're not asking for me to sympathize for. No, somebody. yeah, you yeah, know, I know. I'm, I'm just asking you every day. If you're not being too hard country, on him, and nobody uh, even thinks about them. We just lost uh, some 150 people in Plateau State. You know, we don't even know their names, so. Nobody is special in my eyes. Nobody deserves to die any tragic or timely death. So I'm just giving you my opinion about what I know about him and the part that I played in it. I, I'm currently in understate. I don't see any highways. I don't 
I personally help his uh, teachers in some secondary schools in the state. I help uh, fix secondary school classroom in my hometown. This shouldn't have happened, especially considering that uh, we could have resolved this a year ago, give a clear path to transition and allow some kind of attention to issues of development in the state. So uh, the fact that somebody dies doesn't mean that we should not talk about how the living will progress. Mm. He's dead. He doesn't see us anymore. He doesn't care about us. There's nothing we say here that will affect him. Okay. He's so right. the, 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 there matter. is a school of thought, um, you know, that, you know, says he will remember, remembered, you know, he left a legacy um, with his, his um, rise to become a senior advocate of Nigeria. He also played a part in uh, the Nigerian political scene where for the first time uh, you had a, a ruling political party being defeated. Um, he was part of the APC. And then also as governor, one of his legacies people have talked about is his role in the emergence of Omoteko, which seems to have brought some uh, calm in terms of security, uh, you know, banditry, uh, headsman activities. Uh, that's uh, the bad headsman. Uh, headsmen, pharma clashes, if you want to call it that, um, that Omotekun really came uh, to bring a relative peace to the Southwest. Uh, what's your take on that? You know, I, I, like I said, I look at a big picture. I don't look at uh, small things. I don't look at uh, symbolism. Um, he's done his part and uh, he's died. And there's no reason for me to try to play down what people believe to be his legacy. I'm just speaking to you directly from my heart. And I said, you know, I judge him, I judge his political party, I judge their conduct and character. And they don't meet up to my own standard. And does, nothing says I can't speak my mind simply because someone died. Uh, Akira Dolu, being who he was before he died, would have said what he felt. When former President Yara Dura was sick and they were doing the same, playing the same game, with Nigeria, he spoke out, you know. As a matter of fact, I think I said it on the show, if not, I said it somewhere, where he returned from vacation, his medical vacation, and he was told clearly that uh, this was uh, gonna be time now. He told his family to take him to his hometown or so that he could die peacefully there, but of course he refused. I, I said he the family refused to take him his there? Life. Okay, you said Say the family refused him to, to take him to his hometown. Yes, when he came back from this last vacation, from what I learned uh, from family sources, he requested that he doesn't want to go anywhere anymore uh, because he was told clearly in a German hospital in Berlin that uh, he can't make it. And uh, he wanted to go back to his hometown and just die there. But uh, I heard his wife and his son and some members of his political family refused. He said he, because he needed to use his presence to impeach his deputy and put someone that's malevolent that can do their bidding. That's part of what I'm talking about. This ought not have happened at all. This is uh, dragged on for too long. If there was any part of a period that he was uh, mentally aware, physically aware, and he didn't step his foot on the ground, I think that was a flaw on his part. But we're not, it's too late now. We can't be blaming him. But I'm just telling you uh, contextually and analytically how I see things in this state. All right. Uh, um, I, I don't know if we can we can say categorically um, that his wife, his son, um, his family, and those in his inner circle uh, didn't take him to a war um, to allow him live out his last days as he wished uh, because they wanted to, you know, use him for politi yeah, political gains. Uh, yeah, sure, I'm coming, please. I'm so sorry. This, and I, 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 I had a reason to take care of yeah. an aged father for for quite some time, you know, quite some time. And um, uh, I know sometimes when he says, you know, I just want to go home and die, I will hope against hope that, that to keep him alive and do everything that I needed to do um, to keep Mr. Bartels alive, because I felt he had lost hope, but I still had hope that he could um, make it through, pull through, you know. So I know you understand, you know, that, that you know, family members, me, loved ones, you want to no, do I, everything. I, I, understand, you, I, I understand that you're playing the devil's advocate no, here. No, 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 no devil's advocate. I'm just bringing another, another possibility. Many advocates yeah. already. You don't have, what I'm saying here is what I know. There's nothing, and you can go back and watch all my 
position on this one don't matter since it started that I started speaking with you directly. There's nothing I told you that is not true. I was the first person to tell you on this show that he's had cancer and that he can't stand up, he can't walk, he can't control himself, he cannot do anything. I said that barely a week ago, if you recall. Yeah, yeah. And this is a week later. The person I told you precisely couldn't do anything and I was brain dead uh, has died completely now. They were just they were just keeping him up. I think they put him on a life, uh, you know, they put him on life support for a while. And, you know, when they took him to Canada, I'm sorry, to Germany, the initial hospital that treated him in Berlin rejected him. They had to fly him to Hanover, where, you know, they just accepted him grudgingly. Nobody's even sure if he went in there dead and they were just hiding his body. They, what happened in that Kerdulu's case, if he were if we were to be in a you know, in a serious country, there will be investigations because there are allegations of forgery. If this happened in the US, you will see family members facing attempted murder charges. And I'm serious. I'm not joking. You can't do this to someone and not answer for your crimes just because you feel like you can milk his vulnerable condition. And nobody's talking about it. Everybody wants to say, oh, rest in peace. This man can't find peace because he was not allowed to even. Uh, live in peace towards uh, the most vulnerable period of his life. I, I don't think if there's life after death, Akredo will be happy with the way he was treated by members of his family and close political associates. Well, well I don't I, I, know it's, it's a hard people. one. It's a hard I one. I know never find yes. out. Yeah, you, you, you say you Let have reports. Yes. Let me tell you this. Okay. Let me tell you this. See, today, see, today, do you know that Nigerians don't know what Kiliar are None. And, and it, this was a contest political period. It almost broke this country. But because we have very low memory, we are people who are quick to forget. We don't take anything serious. We just like to move on. Nobody to today has seen the medical report of Omar Musa Yadra. Nobody knew the hospital where he was treated in Germany. Nobody can tell you, except a few people. In Saudi Arabia. But if this was in the US, there would be an inquiry. Mm. Mm -hmm. There will be a commission of inquiry so that this will not repeat itself. Okay. And it is because we didn't treat the Yaradua case seriously that okay. somebody could have done this with Tondo State. And who knows what they would do again? Yes. Sure, sure but, but what, I, what I'm saying is your, your information, and you used the word incapacitated last time that you were on this program. And I, yes. I, I did ask you, you know, what's the source of information I tried to probe. Um, you're saying that, I mean, maybe, maybe you were right, because, I mean, this is. Some days after. No, that maybe was, I was yeah. I was completely right. right. I was hundred percent yeah. okay. right. So, so, so but at, at, right. I mean, you said he was at a point of death and he's died. So it's it's turning yes. towards, um, you know, what you said. But on the part of the family, on the part of the wife, on the part of my son, um, son, can we say that they did not love their father enough to want to do everything to keep him alive? You know. Because if you're saying that they could be tried for culpable homicide, it was in the U.S., but the man was already told to go home and die. So it was already a fair complete. It was already a fair complete. He was asked to go and die, right? So how can you, how can you accuse an, uh, them of killing somebody an, who was already no, no. dying? Yeah. You, you see, somebody, somebody could be in coma. Can you listen to me, please, one second? You know, somebody could be in coma in a hospital and has a date of death, say he's going to die, you know, next month. If a nurse goes in there to pull the plug without being asked to do so, without the permission of the family, that nurse will face culpable homicide charges. Do you know that? Okay. <laughs> you know that, right? I'm, I'm listening you to can't you. Just, okay. You can't just kill somebody. But if you kill somebody through negligence or through, you know, very intentional harm, uh, you could also face charges. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that... He didn't know he would die, but they didn't have to kill him. They didn't have to treat him in a manner that is so negligent that he died suddenly, or the manner he died. So that's what I mean. That's you, you can, somebody could be, you know somebody could want to kill himself. You can go commit suicide if you fail. You if you also face charges. You know that you can want to try to commit suicide if you don't kill yourself in the course of committing suicide. You face charges. You know that, right? All right. All right. Let, 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 let's do the personal side of it. We'll, we'll come back. Simply we'll because 
They determined that he might die. You can't do that. You can't do anything to hasten the death of anybody through negligence or through any intentional acts and get away with it. Right. Let's learn that today. All right. All right. We, we wait to hear, you know, get some more information on the, you know, circumstances of his death. We may ne the sad part is that we may never, we may never get any information. Oh. You know, this is how we move on in Nigeria. Nobody's going to tell you because the next set of people who they, they will, instead of learning how to prevent this, they will go and learn how, you know, Akredolo's family and his people got away with it so that they can do it when it's their turn too. That's why Nigeria is the way it is. Uh, Omoyo uh, what, 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 with the benefit of hindsight, um, the whole political imbroglio and the battle between uh, the inner circle of um, Akerdulu and, of course, the deputy governor and his people, um, with the benefit of hindsight, do you think the political battle was worth it if this man was so close to, uh, to uh, his grave? Uh, those who fought the battle knew it was worth it. I, you know, the part of it that I did was very much worth uh, the outcome. Uh, uh, those who wanted to keep him so that they can forge his signatures and, uh, you know, take away 7.9 billion naira from the state while he was away. You remember I had a rally or town hall meeting where I said he was the most, most expensive ghost worker in Nigeria's history. Those who were benefiting and ripping from it, you know, they, it's what it is. They're, they're smiling to the things. And, you know, they're going to bring him from Germany. I'm sure they will inflate cost of uh, transportation of his body. It's more scam, scam, a scam. It's, again, that's what Nigeria is. That's why I look at this from the context of how do we keep doing this to ourselves? Mm -hmm. And we argue on TV, oh, you know, why are you not sympathetic, you know? Um, you know, but... Just as I'm talking to you, people are going to die on the highway between Ore and uh, and Akure because they refuse to dualize the roads. Uh, people are going to be dying in hospitals that were not built. If they built hospitals in Nigeria, maybe he'll be alive today. They had hospitals that are good. The place where he died is a small town ahead. Small, it's a state hospital, you know. Uh, in the state of, uh, oh, you know, I forgot the name of it, but it's close to Hanover. So that's where he died. He, says, he died in a state hospital, from what I heard. State hospital, just like Ondo State, you know, in Germany. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, um, so you, you want, you know, the circumstances surrounding his death and the, uh, the refusal of the governor to resign. And, you know, we had a whole drama with his signature. Um, you had uh, uh, contracts being approved, you know, Government documents being signed. You want all that to be investigated. Who should undertake that investigation? You know, um, sorry, I, I don't have much expectations, and I'm sorry to say this because uh, even our little experience coming to the state shows that you know the new governor, the, the substantive governor, now is probably low budget accurate as well. Uh, you know. I even heard today that he was not aware that the governor died until he read in media. He was in Ibokoda, and then he was told the letter that was written to President uh, uh, President Tinubu was written by, you know, Atkeridolu's wife and a cabal. You know that as of four days ago, his wife was in a state meeting with some state legislators. And you ask yourself, under you know, what authority would she be meeting with officials of the state? Your husband is in hospital in Germany. You are here meeting with uh, state, and they were bragging at that meeting that oh, he will soon be back. Him and speak. That's why I said, you know, these guys are a joke. You know, these legislators in the state, and probably across the country, anyways. And then next, yesterday, she was on social media fighting over you know some concrete divider in Akure. Why did they demolish it? You know, and all that. These people are bush people. Your husband, you, you know, that's part of the reason why I think this woman should be investigated. I'm sorry to say, maybe there's something she knows that the rest of us don't know. You know, right. uh, regarding the condition of our husband and what she, what it meant to her. You know, if anybody tries to be empathetic, I think it is his wife. And I'm not saying things I don't know. I'm talking about things she's doing publicly. Very embarrassing. This, I'm talking about yesterday. She was still fighting over some issues, some irrelevant issues in the state, at the state capital. 
and her husband was there in coma, dying, uh, and probably they were looking for her to pull to ask permission to what, pull what? the plug. She 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 could she could what? she couldn't care less. We we, ha we 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 have to cross check, you know, do some fact checking, um, to know whether she was by the husband's side in Germany, uh, in Hanover, or uh, until you find out my facts and facts, they remain very very tangible. Okay. All right. All right. Well, you're the one who broke, uh, or your outfit broke the death of the story of death of Yaradwa. Uh, he told us how he called that. Um, uh, we have to go, Moyele Shore. I want to take just the last one. Uh, what do you expect of the new leadership going forward in Ondo State? And what should the new governor focus on? I think I mentioned it when we started the conversation. Any state uh, that's in transition, elections are coming, they don't expect much. What I see the new uh, the substantive governor tried to do is to buy the ticket of uh, uh, APC, you know. And from what I'm aware of, the chairman of APC is his friend, you know. That's uh, uh, Gandola, former governor of Kano State. G Gandhi, 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 uh, Gandhi, Gandhi, yes, no, not Gandola. So they have a good friend. So it's a easy buy, you know. Uh, there are people like uh, Jimo Ibrahim and all these characters in the state. I feel bad for the states, considering the people who are lining up to become governors. So, uh, but you know, a lot of things are also going to change uh, in the next few weeks and months. So, just watch out. Okay. Uh, when you say things are going to change, you have something up your sleeve you want to tell us? No, I, I know where you heard is. Oh, maybe Shore wants to contest for governor. Never. I'm not going to contest for the governorship of the state. But I'm just saying that it's. You know, as terrible as things are in Ondo State, it's also a very dynamic state historically. Sometimes the people of Ondo State wake up the way you never expect. You know, you know, this is the first state in the federation that elected a Labour Party candidates. When all of that major parties were winning election, they opted to go for yeah. an, un an unknown party, Labour Party. So it's a very dynamic state. They do, right. you know, in in my in quote and unquote, on those state people do crazy things sometimes. I wish they did this time around before, before now. We could have resolved this a year ago. All right, Omoyele uh, Shore, you've said a lot, a lot of sound bites, you know, from uh, tonight's interview. And uh, you're a national figure, so when you talk, I know people want to listen. We will want to cross check some of the things you've said and probably give a chance to those you've uh, accused to come on New Central Politics HQ to. Uh, to do a rejoinder out to give their side and let's see how we can balance things. But hey, your view is your view, entitled to it. Thank you very much for your time. We look forward to having you again on this program. And our condolences to you, uh, those of you who are from Mondo State. All right, uh, we'll be back to talk about the situation in Plateau State, uh, North Central Nigeria, where the death toll is increasing as we uh, speak. Please stay with us.